Today is Thursday, November 6th, and this is News from the Frunk, Episode 8. Hey everyone, welcome to News from the Frunk, Episode 8. Sorry it's been 10 days since the last one, but I've been travelling. Always too much to do. Uh, today is going to be a relatively short episode. We'll just catch up on last night's shareholder news uh, from the Q3 results from Tesla. So I'm going to go through the earnings from two points of view. One is the people who are shorting the stock and think Tesla is doomed to fail. And then we'll look at it from the uh, positive point of view. I'm very long on the stock, and uh, as we all are, I think, great supporters of Tesla. So we'll see what the good news was versus the bad news. And I'm going to refer to my notes quite a bit, so apologies for uh, looking down and reading. Um, right, bad news first. So, um, production of 7,200 cars for the quarter, which was actually quite a lot below Q2 uh, of 8,700 cars. So, uh, if you're looking for bad news, that's certainly a big one. Deliveries below analyst expectations. They were expecting about 8,000 deliveries. Tesla managed just under that uh, 7,785. Uh, Non-gap gross margin was down pretty significantly. 23% uh, was the number versus 26.8 in the previous quarter. Uh, slightly up on a year ago, but um, uh, very disappointing that their margin was down. Uh, warranty accrual increased, which suggests that they're having quality problems. Uh, deliveries of Model X, uh, the target date slipped for the fourth time. They're now saying Model X deliveries won't start until Q3 2015. Uh, the revenue was a miss based on analyst expectations. And, uh, you know, taken all together, Tesla is making all kinds of promises and, and missing them. So they, they missed on gross margin, they missed on revenue, they've slipped Model X, um, and they didn't deliver or produce as many as they said they were going to do. So. Um, I think we should pretty much write Tesla off now, actually. So the the positive point of view, which is the one I subscribe to, um, let's take those and some other numbers and tell a very different story. So the 7,785 deliveries were the most that Tesla has ever made in a quarter, despite the two-week factory shutdown. And actually, the number of deliver the number of cars that they produced, although maybe analysts weren't expecting that many, that's what Tesla said they were going to do. So it was completely in line with their forecast. Um, they're now expecting Model S deliveries and orders to increase 50% next year. Uh, as always, they are saying, and Elon was pointed this out time and time again, they are absolutely supply constrained, not demand constrained, and they see the demand going up. And that demand was absolutely bolstered by the announcement of the D and the autopilot uh, last month, and they, they saw orders spike off the back of that. Uh, gap revenue um, was up 97.5% year on year. They virtually doubled revenues from a year ago. Oh, and the earnings uh, beat analyst expectations. Uh, analysts were forecasting a loss on a, uh, a gap basis, on a non-gap basis, and they actually came in at two cents positive on uh, non-gap. Now they were, uh, they did actually have a gap loss, but again, that was uh, expected. The deliveries of nearly 7,800 were up from 7,500 last quarter. Um, and uh, as Elon tipped on, uh, I think, Twitter last week, they've actually shifted the deliveries to North America last quarter. Uh, and I think that was to make sure that they, they hit that delivery number. It, obviously, if they put the cars for delivery in APAC or in EMEA, then they spend quite a lot of time on the boat, so they, they probably wouldn't have been able to hit that delivery number if they uh, were still continuing to feed uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, so that accounts for that switch. Um, and uh, the guidance, they were, uh, earlier this year they forecast 35,000 cars for the year, and it looks like they're going to uh, hit that. They may deliver um, slightly less than that, they deliver 33,000, but they are on target to deliver as many, uh, to produce as many cars as they said they were going to do. 
And last but not least, although the margins, the gross margins were down this quarter, they are forecasting that for Q4, the gross margins are going to grow and will be up to 28%. Uh, so very much in line with what the analysts are looking for. So taken together, that's uh, record revenues, record production, record deliveries, uh, earnings beating analyst expectations, uh, strong demand, growing demand, uh, very strong forecast growth for next year. Overall, a very, very rosy picture. Now, as we've discussed before, and as Elon was at pains to point out on the shareholder call last night, the Model S is absolutely supply constrained and not demand constrained. They just can't build enough of them. So to try and accelerate the production rate, they have simplified the number of options that are available or reduced the number of options that are available. So the Model S Design Studio got some pretty significant changes last night. Uh, the S dual motor variant has been eliminated. You can no longer order that. The P85 single motor variant has been eliminated. You can no longer order that. So now we have a single motor 60 single and dual motor S85, and the dual motor P85. They've also eliminated the brown and green uh, paint colors. They are gone. They've also eliminated what were called the performance seats. So they're the ones with the piping on. So now you've got textile, Nappa leather, and if you order the P85D, you can get the next generation seats but they're only available on the P85D. Uh, likewise, the, um, if you want the spoiler or if you want the red brake calipers, they are now only available on the P85D. They've also, and this may have been the case before, I'm not sure, but the autopilot and the tech package have been rolled into one. So if you're looking for autopilot, you have to get the tech package. And they've now added fog lights back into the tech package. The fog lights have been in and out and in and out over the last two years. They are back into the tech package. Um, and I think uh, that's it. So if you're in the process of configuring your first or second, or in some cases like uh, Lola Champkar, who's a, uh, one of the forum users here in Florida, I think he's about to order his fifth Model S. Uh, take a look at those options because what you were looking for may no longer be there. The good news is that simplification is going to accelerate the production rate and, and bring those uh, delivery dates in. One of the other snippets that Elon let uh, loose last night is we now know obviously that the D variant, particularly of the uh, P85, has essentially the original motor in the back but a much, much smaller motor in the front. Uh, there are two variants of that, the 188 horsepower or the 221 horsepower, depending on whether it's the S85 or the, the P85. Um, what Elon said was that this the smaller motor is what they're calling an, a next generation or a generation two motor and is significantly lighter and more efficient, I think, uh, and cheaper than the old motor. And that is technology whether it's going to be the exact same version or, or a variant of that is the is the one that's going to make it into the Gen 3. So the Model X now they've they've proved out the uh, the dual motor variant. So the Model X the Model S dual motor platform is the one that's now going to be available in the Model X, and then that uh, lower power uh, second generation motor is the one that's going to go in Gen 3. So things are looking good for the future. And last but not least, uh, the stock market reacted very well to the earnings call last night. The stock was up 4.4% on the day, closing at 241.22, but it is still down just a fifth of a percent on the week. And that follows a tough week last week when the stock dropped two and three quarter percent as well. On the upside, James Albertine at analyst Stiefel Nicholas has raised his target to $400. So I'm certainly looking forward to when the stock hits that. That's it for news from the truck from this week. I hope to record another one in two or three days' time with all the other news that's going on. Uh, but until then, please comment in the, uh, the doobly-doo below and, uh, the links to the shareholder uh, letter, the shareholder transcript of the earnings call and the recording of the earnings call and anything else that I mentioned, the links down below. And I will talk to you again in a few days. If you'd like to learn more about Tesla and their amazing car, my book... Owning Model S, the definitive guide to buying and owning the Tesla Model S, 
is available online. Link down below.